We are concluding our conversation with Representative Kip Kendrick, and today we're discussing being in the Capitol building and working with constituents. So Representative Kendrick, describe a typical week to the extent there is such a thing for you uh, when the legislature is in session. Yes, uh, long, many hours. <laughs> that would be my first response. Um, so we don't start session on Mondays until about 4 or 5 p.m., depending on the day. Uh, committees start at noon. So, you know, Monday you're getting down there. I try to get down there about 9, 10 a.m. on Monday mornings um, in order to have a few hours to prepare. Committees start up soon after that. And then evening session, depending on the time of session, they can go pretty late. Um, as I said earlier, being on budget committee is such a huge time commitment that, uh, especially when we start hearing from departments or just as soon as the budgeting process starts, you can expect budgeting process to start uh, that Tuesday morning or even that Monday early. And then, you know, we have, we'll be down there at eight o'clock the next day. I'll be down, you know, Tuesday through Thursday, I'll be down there at probably seven, sometimes 6.30 in the morning and then all the way up until typically 7, 8 p.m. at night. Uh, but there are, there are weeks and there are definitely days within weeks where it'll be, you know, 12 a.m., 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3, you know, sometimes, you know, where you're, you're staying to early morning hours um, in, in committee or, or depending on the time of session on the House floor, you know, rushing things through as you, as you move towards the end of session. Because the end of session, there is no... Uh, it is. It is just all the buildup until the very last minute at, at, at 6 p.m. on the last day of session. Everything builds up to that point, so the days get longer. Uh, the 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 pace of it moves more quickly. Um, the as I said, budgeting committee, uh, budget committee takes a tremendous amount of time. That you're sitting in committee, taking testimony, taking public comments. Uh, and then, you know, when I'm not in budget committee, I'll be uh, or on the House floor. Uh, I'll be reading bills for my other committees, be reading bill for pension or higher education, uh, catching up on, uh, you know, some of the markups in education appropriations committees. Um, a lot of time spent in committee, a lot of time spent on the House floor, especially as uh, we move further along into session. It takes a little bit of time in the beginning of a legislative session for bills to move through the committee process and to start being really heard on the House floor. So you'll, you'll have a few bills maybe in the first week or two. Um, so a lot less time in the actual session where we're all together as uh, 163 of us in the body, um, but more, of, uh, more time in committee early on. Um, the budgeting process, as I said, was uh, you're, you're just constantly, you, you will spend eight plus hours a day in budget on top of everything else uh, when, it, when it's in full swing. And uh, when, when I'm in my office, the, that time is, is, is taken up with meetings. And it's, uh, you know, especially when I have con constituents there, I'll, I'll, have, I'll ask my legislative assistants to, have, to pull me out or have a, a group pull me out of a committee hearing as long as I'm not taking a vote or as long as I'm not, uh, it's not critical that I'm in there, I'll have them pull me out to the side gallery or to the, the outside, to the hallway to, to talk about an issue. Uh, I don't try never to miss a meeting, but at times it's uh, difficult to. Um, you know, you're moving from one conversation to the next constantly. You're moving from one line item in budgets to the next, uh, one bill to the next, one amendment to the next, uh, and you just have to keep pace as best you can. It is the one place, uh, I find this very interesting dynamic, it is the one place where you can walk up to any conversation and insert yourself into it, uh. Uh, which is very interesting. You just walk up, two people, three people talking, as long as you know someone in that, you can just walk up and immediately just insert yourself into the conversation and no one thinks anything of it. Uh, and if they do think something of it, they'll give you a look. You're like, oh, I should pray. I'm not invited to this one, so I'm going to step back. Um, but it is an interesting place. Um, you know, it's a, <laughs> a lot of gossip all the time. Uh, everybody's always talking about uh, uh, what they heard or, you know, what's moving or why someone's angling to kill this bill or what the, what the eventual play is on this piece of legislation. Uh, there's a lot of gossip going around the building. Sometimes it could be fun to, to, to listen in on that. Uh, try not to spread it too much, though. So you're going to write a 
book about this at some point, probably. <laughs> right. So uh, you were talking about the end of the session, and Missouri does not, M Missouri legislature meets less than a half a year in the long session, and, and even less than that in, uh, in the even-numbered years. So obviously you're still working uh, the rest of the year. Um, so what are some of the things that you would do after the legislature has adjourned as a legislator? Sure. Uh, so, you know, typically speaking, right after uh, you, kind of, you start the circuit of legislative wrap-ups, right? The forums that uh, different groups that are going to host you to talk about what passed, what didn't pass. Uh, I typically hold a, a, a town hall within a couple weeks after the end of session uh, to talk about again, what passed, what didn't pass, answer questions on some of the legislation that's out there. Um, you know, if there are bills that, uh, that you think are somewhat controversial or um, you think that there is a potential for the governor to, uh, to consider uh, vetoing, then you start those conversations, right? You start the conversations with uh, different interest groups who may uh, have some pull with the executive branch uh, to get them to consider, um, you know, speaking out on something. Because you have uh, you have uh, a couple months there um, where the governor is going to be governor and his staff uh, right are going to be in uh, in full legislative uh, of review of every bill that lands on their desk and uh, you know even if uh, even if a governor is of the same party of the majority party uh, they still they still want to go over everything with a fine tooth comb because there could be. Uh, some errors, or there could be something that could be politically costly for them um, in the long run. So they're going to spend a lot of time reviewing, and, and uh, if there are issues that you have with legislation, that's you want to be selective about how often you lobby the executive branch, but, uh, but consider having conversations mm -hmm. at that point. Uh, and then you, you really move to, not that you're not doing constituent services, but you but you do more, try to do more constituent outreach in, in the interim. And then again, every other year you're, you're running for office. So a lot of that constituent outreach is, is really done around, you know, meeting people's needs, but then also making sure that you're reaching out to groups, keep your name out there, make sure that they know what you're doing uh, to represent them. So talk specifically about that. And you are, you, I know you've talked about some of the, the groups and the organized interests in your uh, district that you uh, uh, work with, but uh, you know, individual citizens are gonna come to you with uh, requests or concerns, but just talk about constituency service, which, and how you and your staff work that uh, in, the, in the course of, of, a, of a legislative session. Sure, um, so when I was elected, or when it, was, when it became clear that I was going to be elected uh, in Basically, in March 2014, when no one filed against me, uh, my predecessor, again, who had backed me very early on, um, he made it clear to me uh, that uh, who I was going to hire to be my legislative assistant. And uh, he, it was his recommendation, right? But it was, it was the same person who is his legislative assistant. And, uh, and he made it very clear to me that your legislative assistant is the most important, thing, most important decision you're going to make. Uh, especially early on, especially new in the age of term limits, um, you you have you get someone with experience who knows your district, and she did. Uh, you get someone who knows the people and the players in Jefferson City and around the state, and she did. And you get someone who, who who's going to be loyal and, and is going to back you and and be responsive to constituents' needs uh, very quickly. And and she was uh, uh, Donna. Donna was her, I won't give her last name, but, uh, but unfortunately she passed away in, in uh, January of 2018. And so I didn't have her this legislative session, but, uh, but she was such a tremendous support for me my first three years down there. My legislative assistant now is great, um, but Donna was, uh, was fantastic. Um, she just had, she knew people. She could, she could tell me where I was going 15 minutes before I, could, before I knew, right? She knew my schedule. Uh, she knew what meeting I was heading into and, and what the dynamic of the meeting may be like. She knew, uh, you know, you've got five minutes to get down to this committee. You, you better hurry. Or, you know, this boat's coming up soon. You better pay attention. But most importantly, um, you know, 
I don't, I don't answer the phones a lot of the times, right? Like it would be my legislative assistant who answers phones or even who gets to review my email before I get a chance to just time wise, um, you know, being pulled in so many different directions. They're often the first, uh, they're often the gate, they are the gatekeeper for you, but they're also the first person who's going to answer that concern, sit, a constituent who calls you. And a lot of the constituents who reach out to us directly, if they're not reaching out about a, a specific issue or a bill uh, to support or you know to oppose, they're reaching out to you because they're having a problem accessing government. Yep. And, um, and Donna had worked in Department of Transportation. Uh, she'd worked in Revenue. She uh, she had 50 years. By the time she was done, she had 50 years. Uh, in in government, uh, wow. in state government, and uh, she she knew everybody. She knew every department, and uh, and so she could answer that phone call and get an get an answer for constituent faster than I ever could, and it was it was critical because that's how you keep constituents happy is you you deliver results and. Um, you know, when she would answer a call and, and take the question, she would obviously keep me updated. I would try to make the phone calls uh, back to constituents, let them get them answers or help them navigate government uh, or help them, you know, solve a problem that they were facing. And I love that piece because I'm, it's who I am, a, a part of my social service background. I kind of bring that dynamic. But, but uh, you know, that legislative assistance is so important uh, to be able to do so much of that front end work uh, for you to keep constituents happy and help people navigate uh, state government. Anything uh, you'd like to add regarding daily work as a legislator and working with constituents? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, um, <laughs> I, I don't want, definitely not looking for a pity party. At times it can be, uh, sometimes it could be a thankless job. Um, the dynamic right now in the political sphere is 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 toxic. I don't think I'm saying anything uh, groundbreaking when I say that. Um, it's it's a difficult place to be in, right? Uh, there's a there's a lack of uh, trust for elected officials right now. A lot of that we bring on ourselves uh, collectively, um, and you know it's. Um, it's a it's a divisive time in the nation. It's a divisive time, you know, in the state or a local arena. It's just people are divided, and uh, and oftentimes you hear you hear that from people. You hear frustrations, and whether they're not people aren't lashing out at me, or but you'll hear just the general concern about the 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 um, the profession that you've chosen to go down, and um, you know regardless of whether I believe. Uh, or agree with a lot of the individuals in the building. I, I do think most people down there, vast majority of people, are there for the right reasons. Sometimes it gets misguided. Uh, sometimes uh, they may not uh, necessarily make some great decisions. Um, but I enjoy the work, um, and I enjoy the people. And and working with constituents, and and being able, especially in a member of a super minority, being able to help someone through a problem. Um, or you know, being able to help uh, you know bring something to the community or do some type of education piece can be just as rewarding as spending time in the building making votes and trying to push legislation. Uh, it's a it's a tremendous honor, um, you know. And uh, you know, if I if I have constituents watching this, if I haven't answered your email yet, I, I, I apologize. I'll try to get to it soon. <laughs> the amount of contact that you get, the amount of emails and phone calls that you get. Uh, not overwhelming, but but it can it can be a lot to to keep on top of. But um, you have thirty seven thousand people in your flock, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and uh, and, a, and and especially in a, in a in a community like Columbia, there's a lot of engaged citizens uh, who pay attention. Uh, who often, it's not uncommon that I'll have uh, that I'll have constituents bring bills that concern them. Um, to me, to my desk, and I'll have no idea what the bill is. Like, what's going on with this piece of legislation? It's like. There's 2,000 bills filed right now. I don't know. <laughs> let me let me look into it. Um, but it's uh, it's it's great when people are engaged. It's great when you hear from people because that's when you know the people are paying attention. That's when you know you're doing a good job. When or or if you, what areas you need to improve when you hear from yeah. people when you get yeah, that you're accountable. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I always tell my students who are veterans of the military or who are in active duty military. I say thank you for your service, and Representative Kendrick, I want to thank you for your service uh, to the state and uh, to your alma mater, 
um, and for your uh, wonderful assistance with uh, my political science class. I think this has been very uh, informative, and I appreciate the time you've taken, and continued success to you as a legislator, sir. Thank you very much. I, I enjoyed this conversation tremendously.